What is going on everybody, Nazdarachi coming back at you again today for another episode for Dragon Ball Legends. What we're going to be talking about today is actually some fairly big and refreshing news for the game. We have something that they've announced overnight last night with Reset that has me very excited for the future of the game. We're going to have again a very big mix up and we're going to dive in and talk about that real quick and I'm going to give everyone my thoughts on this new mode, the preliminary breakdown everything we can expect and some cool theories and ideas for how it will impact the game moving forward into the future so of course what we are talking about today if we check out the internet here is going to be the brand new ultimate battle mode coming to Dragon Ball Legends again they announced this over the reset so I figured I'd throw my thoughts into the mix here so ultimate battle one is coming It is a limited time rating match event with special rules this time's rule is standardized limit break status matches, bring your best party, aim for the top of the world ranking. See the in-game news for info. So we can bring up blue stacks here because all we need to do is check out some of the in-game news. So of course, ultimate battle. Ultimate battle is a limited time rating match event with special rules. That's kind of what Twitter already told us. Compete for rating points throughout the season. Use your strongest party and your best strategies to shoot for the top world ranking. Now, the scheduled event period is starting with the reset of PvP after this period that's ending up and coming here with tomorrow into the next day. The event period may be subject to change depending on the maintenance duration. PvP moving forward is planned to alternate between Super Space Time Duel and Ultimate Battle. Alright, so let's take a break and process everything we've read so far. So, Ultimate Battle is going to be a new game mode. It is basically going to be rotating with the Super Space Time duels and then into the Ultimate Battle. Every season, it'll flip-flop back and forth between the two. And what this does is it allows the game to preserve the game mode that we are currently used to, that people have come to expect and that they've paid their way into, getting all the stars on their characters and maintaining their accounts. That kind of is something they don't want to fully get rid of so every other season we're gonna have this ultimate battle which is going to have special rules that will likely be different every time we see this so there'll be a season again normal super space time duel and then on the ultimate battles we'll have rotating rule sets what this does is it allows the devs to try new things while again preserving what everyone has already come to expect and I find this to be really exciting because we will be able to have a lot of variety, a lot of fresh new options for the game and something that's going to mix things up for those of us that have been playing for a long time while also in most cases I'm assuming going to kind of even things out where newer players will also be able to be competitive. At face value it's almost like this is going to be something that's more free to play friendly and then the classic mode will be where the whales will continue to dominate towards the top end. And again, that's something that I think is very healthy for the game and is going to be pretty exciting moving forward. So the ultimate battle number one, this upcoming PvP season, is going to have a special rule that is the standardized limit break status matches. Again, Twitter told us that. But to dive into more detail, all characters, levels, classes, and limit break statuses will be made equal within each battle rank. Every single one of the characters in the game that you own will be unlocked to 14 stars. This is actually very similar to the Legends Battle Royal setup, that little limited time tournament where you'd get the daily tickets and three times per day, you could fight these matches where all the characters were evened out basically. So I'm not entirely sure if this is a replacement for that mode, we still might see something like that or a reformatted version of that with the same name in the future. I think this is just something that they're trying to introduce to reliably freshen and mix up the gameplay in the game, which again, I am all for. So the first one here, again, will be very similar to the Legends Battle Royale. And what that's going to consist of is, again, every character being max soul boosted. Now, free to play players are going to benefit extremely from this rule set because they're going to be able to compete for rating points on generally an equal standing, comparatively speaking. But whales still will get a little bit of an edge. If you check out this news right here, Zenkai Awakened characters will battle with all Zenkai abilities and Awakening panel stat bonuses possible for their awakening rank the special rules in ultimate battle will change each season so 
that's something we're going to process separately. So what it's saying about Zenkai characters is if you have a character, for example, at Zenkai 3, but you have not unlocked any of the Soul Boost panels at all, it's just going to, by default, fully boost those up and give those to you for free for the season. It's just basically something you're not going to have to worry about doing, and bam, you'll just get them. How this is going to benefit whales is they've summoned on the Zenkai banners enough to get their character to Zenkai 7, but they haven't finished soul boosting them. They're going to have that Zenkai character fully unlocked, fully buffed, and it's going to be a little bit scary. However, even the free-to-play players will have their 14-star units that they can use to counterplay. Because for example, if you were able to pull Majin 21 and she's two or three stars, she'll automatically be 14 stars. And you can kind of use that to try and counterplay the Zenkai Beerus or the Zenkai Fat Boo. That's just one example. But it's going to even things out where I don't think it's going to necessarily be that bad. Again, only the small percentage of people that have already Zenkai 7 units are going to benefit from that the most. Generally, most of the matches should be fairly even and rounded out. Now, processing the second part here, the special rules in Ultimate Battle will change each season. This gives us something to look forward to, again, in terms of the variety of the matches. I can think of tons of different ideas that they can introduce, some that we've seen before, like limiting matches to EX units only, or maybe heroes only, and tons of new ideas as well. Like, think of matches that could be limited to 1v1s, or 2v2s, or maybe three characters but with no bench, or no equipment matches, where equipment is irrelevant, you can't equip it or matches where Rising Rush is limited to zero uses, or maybe one use per battle. There's tons of different ideas, again, that I could sit here and come up with that would change the way the game plays out and make things just different. Maybe a season where Shallot's a mandatory character on everybody's team, or something like that. That one's a little bit more limited, but I'm sure if we sat here, we could come up with tons of ideas, like Saiyans only PvP season, maybe, or you know, just something like that. There's, again, plenty of ideas, and if you guys have any cool ones, definitely let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear your ideas for special sets of rules that could apply to this ultimate battle. And then, of course, every other season it'll rotate into something we are more used to. That's pretty much all we know so far. I'm sure many of you guys have already read this, and I just kind of wanted to walk you through it with my take on it, my ideas, and you know some of that based on what we've seen in the past, and some of it is just pure speculation as to what we could be looking at in the future. I'm truly excited to see modes where Rising Rush could be limited, or again, the 1v1s, no equipment, certain colors are you know, more mandatory. There's tons and tons of different ideas. And I don't want to just pad the video out and drag it out sitting here coming up with ideas. But again, I would love to hear any that y'all might have down in the comments section below. As with any other ideas or thoughts you have on the game. Because again, I do know that many people at the current point in time have started to get a little bit tired of the sameness of the game. So this should really mix things up. Maybe not so much this first one because again, it is kind of similar to the Battle Royal that we have seen before. But moving forward in the future, I am fully anticipating them mixing up way different styles of gameplay than what we've seen before. And I am just extremely excited for everything we're going to be seeing. Outside of that, I can possibly throw together a PvP battle in the meantime, towards the end of the season here, with the new Waifu Android 21 dual team-up. There's nothing too much else new to talk about, but we will be anticipating the Sin Shenron banner, as well as Baby Vegeta, and this Ultimate Battle. So I will be keeping you guys posted on both accounts, as well as anything else new or exciting that we get in terms of information. I love keeping you guys updated and having something to talk about. So in the meantime, if you're new around here, consider subscribing so I can see you again on future videos. Hit that little notification bell as well. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Help spread it out on YouTube so more people can hear the news and process everything that we have going on. A new game mode is effectively coming to the game even though it's going to rotate out every other season. Let me know what your hype levels are down below. Other than that, I'll be talking to you again very soon with some fresh video content. Peace out and have a great day.